scholars were walking the streets in all of these cities looking for someone to take charity. Anyone. They couldn't find any. No one is poor. So the caliphate ordered them to buy bird's food and throw it on top of mountains so no one will ever be hungry. People, animals, and birds. Before you write your CV to apply for a job, before you open a business, before you invest your money in a project or with a bank, before you even go to the mall, these are 45 Sharia rulings about money that every Muslim should know. Number one, the Prophet peace and blessing be upon him said, the most beloved place to Allah is the masjid, the mosque, and the most hated is the marketplace. Al-Imam al-Nawawi, while explaining this hadith, he said, because marketplaces are the places for lying, cheating, deception, usury, false oath, breaking promises, and turning away from the remembrance of Allah. All of that, of course, is haram money. Number two, you can find the same meaning in this hadith. Every time you visit the marketplace, you are in an ongoing struggle against Satan until you get out of there. So take care. Number three, in Quran, chapter 83, verses from one to three, God is promising a great punishment for people who care about every gram when they are buying then cheat people in weight when they are selling. This doesn't only apply to weight. This applies to quality, raw materials, expected lifespan of a product, effective work time of an employee. Nowadays, we're used to companies over-promising the miraculous effect of their skincare product or hair product or supplements, and that's all fake. Exaggerating the quality of electronics while purposely degrading its durability to sell more in the future. Purposely hiding devastating problems with their products that you will only know when it's too late. Purposely making their products unrepairable so you have to go back to them for repairs and pay more money. And finally, employees pretending to work 8 hours, procrastinating all day, cheating their managers and taking their haram salary at the end of the month. All of that is haram money. God promised huge punishment for all of these people. Number four, the prophet peace and blessing be upon him said, whoever sold something that had a defect, which he didn't disclose, had earned God's wrath and will be cursed continuously by the angels. Number five, regarding usury. Quran chapter two, 275. Those who devour usury will stand on the judgment day like those driven to insanity by Satan. This is because they said trade is like usury, but Allah has permitted trade and has forbidden usury. Number six, also in Quran chapter 2, 278 and 279. Fear Allah and give up outstanding interest if you are true believers. And if you do not, then be informed of a war against you from Allah and from his messenger. Would you like to officially be the enemy of Allah and his messenger just because of one loan from the bank to buy something worthless of dunya pleasures? I don't want to go into details about the banking system here in this video. I will make another video to show you how banks are creating money out of thin air while you are sweating to earn your living. Subscribe so you don't miss it. Number seven, the prophet peace and blessing be upon him cursed the one who accepts usury, the one who gives it, the one who records it, and the one who witnesses to it, saying all of them are the same. That applies to employees who work in the bank, even if they don't pay interest themselves. I know that interest is being forced in every inch of the earth right now, and it's very hard not to deal with it. According to the Guardian, Christians give up their usury rule, even though it is in the Bible until now. Just because some financial problems with the royal family, first the church decided to make usury okay only for the Jews. Then, over time, they decided to make it okay for everyone. 
we don't change our religion like them to make anyone happy. Who cares about people? Muslims are the only ones now still holding on to the rules of God. Don't be weak. Paradise is the real destination, not worldly pleasures. Number 8. Do you know that the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, predicted all of that 1,400 years ago? Let's read the hadith together. There will be a time when usury will be everywhere. Most people will be dealing with interest. Even the few who aren't will be affected by its dust. Isn't that the reality right now? Take care. Number 9. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, prohibited us from selling what we don't have. For example, crops that your land will produce in the future. If any one of you know a little bit about stock future markets, you will understand what is that very easily. Anyway, number 10. Regarding bribery. At the time of the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, one government employee was responsible for collecting zakat money. Came to the Prophet and said to him, This is zakat money and this was a gift for me. They gave me a gift. The Prophet then said, If you stayed in your father's and mother's home, would you receive this gift? By God, any one of you who takes anything without justification will meet his Lord carrying it on the day of judgment. Number 11. Also in Quran, chapter 5, verse 42. God was condemning this group of Jews, saying what? They eagerly listen to falsehood and consume bribes and interest. Don't be like them. Number 12. Do you know that haram money prevents your dua from being accepted? Yeah. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, mentioned a man who lifts his hand towards the sky, making supplication, saying, Rabbi, Rabbi. But his food is haram, his drink is haram, his clothes are haram, and his nourishment is from haram. His supplication will never be accepted. Number 13. Unfortunately, I hear people a lot saying, this is how the marketplace works. If we don't become like them, we will never sell our products. However, the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, told us how to deal with these people cheating you in this hadith. If you are trusted, keep your trust and don't betray whoever betrays you. It doesn't matter what they do, you have your principles. Number 14. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, The truthful, trustworthy merchant is with the prophets, the truthful, and the martyrs. Isn't that better than cheating your customers for a little bit more money? You can be with the prophets in paradise. Number 15. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, Whoever cheats us is not one of us. If the whole world is cheating to grow their business, you don't cheat to grow your property in paradise. How about that? Number 16. When I'm negotiating a business deal, can I squeeze whoever is in front of me to get the best gain for myself and the most loss for him? The answer is, the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, God will have mercy on a man who is easygoing, accessible and tender when he sells and when he buys. You're not smart if you're squeezing the opponent in a negotiation. You're smart if you're easygoing, accessible and tender. Because paradise is what is important. Anyway, if you already made a lot of mistakes as an employee, as a business owner, as a consumer, don't worry. God provided the solution that will clear your money from any haram, that will clear your record from any sins, and that will clear your relationship with God from any wrath. It's called charity. Number 17. Quran chapter 2, verse 261. The example of those who spend their wealth in the cause of Allah is that of a grain that sprouts into seven ears, each bearing 100 grains. This is a minimum reward of 700 multiples on your charity. But that's not the end of it. Finish the verse and Allah multiplies the reward even more to whoever he wills. So we're just talking about minimum reward here. Not your actual reward, inshallah, it will be more. Number 18. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, Charity removes God's wrath. In the same way, water extinguishes fire. Imagine. 
Number 19. In Quran chapter 64, verse 17, God is giving example to understand how charity is rewarded. He is saying, charity is like a loan to Allah. If you lend Allah a good loan, he will multiply it for you and forgive you. For Allah is most appreciative and most forbearing. Number 20. Also in this hadith, the Prophet peace and blessing be upon him said, Charity does not decrease your wealth. Absolutely not. Charity increases your wealth. I'm sure most of you have experienced that in your lives. Tell me your stories in the comments. Number 21. One time, Mother Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, was distributing the meat of a slaughtered animal on the poor. She said to the Prophet, it's all gone except one shoulder that I kept for us. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, responded to her, said, No, Aisha, all of it is remaining except this shoulder. Understand? What was given to the poor is a loan to Allah that he will give back in multiples. But what you will eat will be waste. Number 22. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, The most beloved people to God are the most beneficial to others. And the most beloved deeds to God are helping a brother in trouble, or paying his debt, or feeding his hunger. Number 23. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, gives the poor people of Ahlus Sufa a very high priority. In several occasions, he said, I will not give you and leave Ahlus Sufa suffering from hunger. Number 24. A man heard the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, saying, By the Lord of the Kaaba. They will be the ones who suffer the greatest loss. So he asked the Prophet, Who are they? Then the Prophet responded, They are those who have the most wealth, except those who give in every way they can. But they are a few. Okay, let's answer some common questions regarding charity. Number 25. What is the difference between zakah and sadaqah? Zakah is an obligation on whoever has extra money, exactly more than 87.48 grams of gold. And this money is not part of his monthly expenses, no. This money is left, he didn't use it for a whole year. This person should pay minimum 2.5% of the extra money to the following categories of people. Quran chapter 9 verse 60 Zakah money is only for the poor, for the needy, for those employed for it, and for bringing hearts together for Islam, and for freeing captives, and for those in debt, and for the cause of Allah, and for the stranded traveler. An obligation imposed by Allah, and Allah is all-knowing and wise. After you finish your zakah, any extra charity that you do is called sadaqah. Of course, sadaqah doesn't have the same restrictions in terms of the categories of people you're donating to or the minimum amount. Number 26. I earn some money in haram way. Can I do charity from it? Will it count as sadaqah? And the answer is, the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, God is good and he accepts only good. Number 27. I have leftovers or food that I don't like or clothes that are not suitable to wear anymore in my society. Can I give it to the poor as charity? And the answer is in Quran chapter 2, 267. O believers, donate from the best of what you have. Donate from the best of what you have earned. Do not pick for your donation what is worthless. Do not pick which you yourselves would only accept with closed eyes. Number 28. You can find the same meaning in this hadith. Do not feed the poor from what you don't eat yourself. Number 29. Also you have the same meaning in this hadith. The worst food setting is al-walima. Because only the rich are invited to it and the poor are left out. Whoever does not invite the poor has disobeyed God and his messenger. Number 30. Someone might ask. If God promised all of this great reward for everyone who does charity, and my wealth will not be decreased anyway, can I donate like 100% of my wealth to the poor? One of the friends of the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, asked him this question. 
He said, can I donate all my wealth? The prophet said, no. The man said again, can I donate half of it? The prophet said, no. The man said, can I donate third of it? The prophet said, okay, third. However, third is a lot. Number 31, another one of the friends of the prophet came to him and asked him, I want to repent to Allah. Can I donate all my money to charity and ask God for repentance? The prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, keep part of your money. It's good for you. Number 32. Someone might ask, is there anything that can nullify my sadaqah reward? And the answer is yes. There are three things that will nullify your reward. Quran chapter 2 verse 264. O believers, don't nullify your charity with reminders of your generosity or hurtful words. And number three, like those who donate their wealth just to show off. So in other words, if you help someone with money and then called him the next day, told him, remember how generous I was with you yesterday? That's it. Your reward is gone. Now let's talk about consumerism. I understand if someone who is lost in life has no relationship with God whatsoever, normally will look for happiness in worldly pleasures, will keep buying and consuming as much as he can afford, thinking that this way he will be happy. But we as believers, we know that there is nothing you can buy that will fill the gap in your soul. There is nothing you can buy that can make you live a fulfilled, content life. This gap in your soul can only be filled by the love of Allah. And these are the rulings from Quran and Hadith regarding this matter. Number 33. Quran chapter 7 verse 31. Eat and drink, but do not be excessive. Indeed, he does not like those who are extravagant. Number 34. One day, Umar ibn al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, met one of his friends who had a bag in his hand. Umar ibn al-Khattab asked him, What is this? The man said, I desire to eat some meat, so I bought it. Umar ibn al-Khattab disapproved of this behavior and he asked him, Every time you desire something, you buy it? Also, there is something else that we have to talk about. There is a whole industry worth billions of dollars built on lowering your self-esteem, making you feel bad about yourself. Do you know why? Because after that, they will offer you hundreds of ways to change how you look, convince you that it is for the better. First, they give you unrealistic body images and convince you this is beauty. And then they tell you you look ugly and then they take your money. Come, get your one meter eyelashes or one meter colorful nails. Remove your eyebrow completely and let's draw a new one. Get your fake hair extension or completely fake hair. Get a new face using makeup. Wear seductive clothes to seduce everyone publicly, like a free service. How about we go to the next level? Make some plastic surgeries. Make smaller nose. How about we make Barbie-like body parts? And for the boys, take the supplements and hormones to grow fake muscles. Slow down, guys. These businesses are fooling you just to take your money. Life is much easier than that. Number 35. In Quran, chapter 95, verse 4. God said, Indeed, I created humans in the best form. That's it. You don't have to change anything. Number 36. In Quran, chapter 4, verse 119. We learned how Satan promised to delude us. I will most surely lead them astray and delude them with empty hopes. I will most surely command them so they will alter the creation of Allah. Did you hear that? Alter the creation of Allah. Thus, whoever follows Satan instead of Allah has truly lost an evident loss. Now you understand who is behind all of this change how you look propaganda. Something else. Have you ever heard the phrase keeping up with the Jonases? It describes people's tendency to keep up with their neighbors or friends. And now, of course, in the age of social media, the circle is much bigger. 
they have this brand clothes, I have to buy one too. They have this nice car, I have to have a better one. Spending money for social proof, for proving that you are not less than others, not for your needs. This culture is widespread in godless societies. People who have no self-respect will try to feel better about themselves with some purchases. Why? To prove that they are better than their peers. But our belief is the exact opposite. Number 37. In Quran 49 verse 13, God said, Surely the most noble of you in the sight of Allah are the most righteous, not the one with the most expensive car. Number 38. In Quran chapter 15 verse 88, God said, Do not let your eyes crave the fleeting pleasures I have provided for them. Don't waste your money in pointless arrogance competition. Doesn't matter what he or she has. What matters is righteousness. Number 39. And this is a scary one. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, Whoever wears a garment of pride and vanity, libas al-shuhra, in this world, Allah will clothe him with the garment of humiliation on the day of resurrection. And then it will be set on fire. Garments of pride are clothes bought for the purpose of proving that you are better than someone else. Think about that when you see luxury brands. To finish the subject, I want to talk quickly about how to deal with our employees and servants. Don't worry, it won't be long. Number 40. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, Your servants are your brothers. Allah has put them under your authority. So, if someone has his brother under his authority, he should feed him from what he eats. He should clothe him from what he wears. And he should not burden him with anything that is too much for him. And if you burden him with that, then help them. Number 41. Anas ibn Malik, may Allah be pleased with him, said, I served the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, for 10 years. He never told me one single bad word, not even off. Number 48. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, used to ask his servant, Do you need anything? Do you need anything? Until one day, his servant said, Yes, I need your intercession on judgment day. The Prophet responded, Then help me with a lot of sujood. Number 43. One day, the Prophet ordered Anas ibn Malik to go do a task. But Anas came across some children playing in the street and ignored the order of the Prophet. He played with them. But he was so unlucky because the Prophet caught him. He looked at the Prophet expecting rage and anger. But in fact, he found the Prophet smiling and said to him, Unais, Unais is like a nickname, like little Anas. Unais, did you go where I commanded you to go? He said, Allah's messenger, yes, I'm going. Anas further said, I served him for years. He never said to me about a thing which I had done, why did you do that? Or about the things that I had left, why didn't you do that? Number 44. A man came to the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, and said, Messenger of Allah, how often shall I forgive my servant? The Prophet replied, forgive him 70 times per day. By the way, 70 in classical Arabic is a way to exaggerate the amount of anything. So if you want to say forgive him a lot, in classical Arabic you say forgive him 70, which means a lot. Number 45. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, used to pray and make dua for his servant. He would say, Allah, increase his wealth. Allah, increase his children and bless everything that you gave him. And this is how we should be treating our employees and servants. There are dozens more rulings asking people to donate money in specific conditions or events, like the sacrifice of Adha festival or Zakat al-Fitr at the end of Ramadan, or Al-Aqiqah whenever you have a newborn, or penance for breaking fast, or penance for breaking oath, and so on. I don't want to talk about that in details now because the videos will be so long. However, what I really want to talk about is when society really applied the Sharia rulings regarding money, this was the result. At the time of Caliphate Omar ibn Abdul Aziz, he ruled from what we consider now China in the East to what we consider now Spain in the West. 
more than half of the world back then. Callers were walking the streets in all of these cities, looking for someone to take charity. Anyone. They couldn't find any. No one is poor, looking for someone who is in debt, to pay off his debt. Anyone. They couldn't find any. Looking for orphans who need help, they couldn't find any in all of this territory. Looking for someone who needs help to get married, or needs a house at least, they couldn't find any. So the caliphate ordered them to buy birds food and throw it on top of mountains so no one will ever be hungry. People, animals, and birds. Isn't that much better than our world today, where the richest 1% own half of the world's wealth, while billions are starving, suffering in extreme poverty, according to the Guardian? That is what Islam can do for you. You just have to stop being brainwashed into serving those 1% all your life, thinking that you are free. If you enjoy this content, please don't let it stop with you. Help it spread with likes, comments, and shares. And if you want to watch our full playlist on Sharia Law, click here. Thanks and Salam alaikum.